Hey, what's up? It's Dan Perry, and in this video, you're gonna get to see an entire complete time lapse of me remodeling my shower. Everything from the demo, as you see here, to retiling it with some fresh subway tile, building out a custom niche, installing the bathtub, removing the bathtub, hooking up the plumbing fixtures, everything, the entire process, all the way through, and I painstakingly videoed this entire process. It was pretty difficult to do while I was also basically installing the tile, so it was a little bit challenging, and you get to see the culmination of all that effort right here, so I hope you enjoy. This video, most of this video is sped up to 1500% of its normal speed and some of the boring parts are sped up to as fast as 5000% of the normal speed. And I've also edited some of the footage out, especially some of the boring parts where nothing really is happening. So although this project looks like it happened very quickly and it may look easier than it actually is, this was actually a very time consuming project. It took me a long time and it does take a lot of work. And this video I created really is just a little teaser because I'm going to be publishing more in-depth videos to teach you exactly how to do this entire process step by step. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get those videos if you want to learn how to install subway tile, learn how to install a bathtub, plus I have a whole bunch of different videos that are high quality, in-depth, easy to understand videos, everything from how to build a retaining wall to how to wall mount a TV. So that's all I really have to say for now, but I will be chiming in here and there throughout the video. Now I'd recommend you put on your favorite music in the background, sit back and enjoy yourself while you learn something new. If you're wondering how I learned how to do this, you might actually be surprised. I mostly learn from watching other YouTube videos, talking to contractor friends, trial and error, and from owning my own handyman business. In fact, most of my handyman skills I learned while starting a handyman business, a local handyman business here. And actually, most of my time and effort creating content online is all about helping other people start a profitable handyman business. So if you'd like to learn how to start a handyman business that generates a six-figure income without having to hire any employees, then check me out at handymanstartup.com. So here I'm actually working on flattening out the walls. So I have a planer and I'm cutting down the high spots on the two by fours so I can create a nice flat surface to mount the tile to. And then I'm using those two by fours to kind of check for flatness. And since I'm gonna be building a custom niche, I'm building the framework for that right here.
Right here I'm leveling the floor for the tub installation. Since I, whenever you install a tub, you definitely want the floor to be perfectly level or actually set the tub in a wet bed of mortar. And since I'm hooking up the tub from the top without actually hooking the plumbing up from underneath, then I have to be extra careful to make sure this valve is in the exact right position. And I did create an entire video exactly how to do this. So go ahead and check that out on my YouTube channel. And here I'm using a clear silicone that was recommended by the tub manufacturer. So they recommended against using plumber's putty and they highly recommended you use one of these specific types of clear silicone. So that's what I'm using to seal all the, all the drain pipes here on the bathtub. And here I'm using shims, so when I screw the bathtub to the studs, I don't bend the bathtub and end up cracking the flange off. And this silicone, or this sealant, that gray stuff I just put on the tub flange is actually called Curdy Seal. It's specifically made for this curdy board that I'm installing, this orange board, which is a um, which is waterproofing. These boards are waterproof once you actually install the curdy seal, which you'll see me do in a minute. And this is definitely a pretty cool system for installing tile. It's very easy. The boards are super lightweight. They're really easy to cut. You could just cut them with a utility knife. As you see here, I'm just cutting out the cutout for this window. Cut it with a utility knife and snap it. It's real easy. The only downside is it can be a little bit expensive, but I think you say I think you make up for that in the amount of time and energy you save using it. So in this project, I decided to make my own custom niche. I wanted it a specific size, and but later on, I realized that it would have been much easier to actually buy one of the pre-made um, Curdy, I don't know what they call them, but they make a custom niche out of the Curdy board where it's already pre-built, it's already sealed for water, and it's it saves a ton of time. So it is kind of expensive, but building that custom niche took a long time, and you'll see why in a minute here. So I'm actually putting some thin set on the bottom of the, the curdy board here just because I want the window to be perfectly level and I did shim it up a little bit there and so I'm just you know adding the level to it. Same with the sides. I wanted a specific distance from the wall so I'm bringing it out just a little bit and making sure that it's going to have a good consistent connection all the way across. And that allows me to have a really square window so when I put the tile in there's no like awkward angles on the tile. And this is actually necessary 
to seal the curdy board to the tub flange. So that's actually, a, that's called curdy fix. And then I'm putting thin set on the wall on the curdy board there. And then I'll put a piece of curdy band there, which is a waterproof membrane. And then I will press it against the wall and squeeze out all the thin set away from that piece. Because you want it to lay as flat as possible so your tile is laid on a flat surface. And then um, the Schluter, which makes these this curdy board, also makes these little seals to go around your tub fill valves um, and your all your pipes and your mixing valve and everything. So they, they seal it off for moisture so nothing goes back into your walls. Because, you know, really the, the moisture protection in the tile installation is, is paramount. It's basically one of the main components of it is making sure that none of the water actually gets in the behind your walls because then you're going to have mil, mold and mildew and all kinds of problems. And so here I'm using uh, the same curdy, curdy fix to uh, seal between the window and the, uh, the curdy board. And this is actually a pretty time consuming process. It takes a long time, especially if you're not very good at it like me. I don't do this project a lot. In my handyman business, I would never even consider taking on a shower tile installation job. It's just too much labor. It takes too long. Uh, this is just on my own house, um, just to learn new skills and to you know, shoot some video and have some fun, improve my own house. I definitely like it to do that. So there's the last seal. As you can see, I scrape out all the extra thin set. But see, here's where I wish I would have purchased one of the Schluter versions of the uh, the niches, because now I have to add all of these little angle pieces in there, and um, it's it's pretty time consuming. It would have been much better just to have a piece that just laid right in. And it doesn't seem like it took a lot of time because I've obviously sped it up, but this was pretty time consuming. And it's a messy process because you're working with thin set and you only have so much time to work with a thin set. It's always important to value your time. You just buy, buy materials that are gonna save you time. So every single joint and corner needs to have one of these seals on it in order to create a waterproof membrane that doesn't allow any moisture to seep, to seep back into the walls. So every single joint, every single seam in the board is going to be covered with this tape with like a two inch overlap on all pieces. And the type of thin set I'm using here is made by Schluter. It's just, a, I think they call it the Schluter All Set. And it's just kind of a um, thin set that you can use for anything. So, you know, a lot of people get all worried about which thin set to use and stuff like that. You know, I just like to use, it's. this is probably a little bit more expensive than other thin sets, but I know it's made for this specific product. I know it's gonna work for my application, so I just go ahead and use it and it works great. And yeah, you need to color all the screw holes. And here I'm actually positioning the tile to figure out where to start to lay the tile. Now, this is actually pretty time consuming because you really got to think through it because you want to make sure that your tile is sitting in the right place. You don't want any really thin pieces of tile, especially around your tub or your windows. So you really got to place it carefully.
And you'll see here that I'm mixing the grout and apply, applying, or sorry, not the grout, but the thin set. I'm applying the thin set to the wall and I have these pencil lines that I drew and I'm leaving those uncovered. As you can see, I'm leaving a thin line there so I can see that pencil mark. That's where I'm going to start my tile, okay? Because I'm gonna be doing a, um, an alternating like seam on the subway tile, I forget exactly what that's called. I need those lines so I can position the tiles perfectly in the center. You'll see why in a second when I start laying the tile. See how I lined it up with that line? And what that does, it allows you to have this tile on the same size on both sides of the wall. The last thing you want to have is like a really thin piece on one side and a really big piece on the other side. And since I have two different seams, see how they're, they're not, the seams aren't stacked on top of each other, I need to have two separate lines. And the best way I've found to do that is to separate them a little bit. Now another way you could do this that saves a little bit of effort is get one of the lasers, the laser levels for like laying tile. Since I don't lay tile a lot, I decided not to buy that product. Instead, I just draw the lines on. And you know, it really wasn't that hard, but it, I could definitely see how it would make, make it significantly easier to get one of the lasers. And here I'll be back buttering the top edge of this last row since I didn't put the thin set beyond where that's gonna sit. So I'm just adding a little bit of thin set to each piece of tile on the top before I push it on the wall. Because you wanna make sure you have a very consistent contact with the thin set with the tile to the wall. Last thing you wanna do is do this whole thing and then have tiles falling off while you're taking a shower. And here I'm using tile wedges to level out the tile. So even though I put down that ledger board to hold up the piece of tile and made sure that was level, it's still, uh, when I put my uh, three foot level on top, it was still kind of sagging in the middle. So one of the reasons you I only do six rows at a time and then level it is to make sure to keep that nice and flat. So the trowel I'm using for this is a quarter inch square notch trowel. And again, I'm going to create a complete in-depth video on exactly how to do all this stuff from mixing the grout to laying the tile, positioning the tile, all that good stuff. I'll, I'll explain it in a lot more detail and a lot better. This is just a little teaser video. And kind of a complete video so you can see the whole process in one big, just one big process, right? Because most of the videos out there are all broken into a hundred different sections and you got to watch 300 videos just to learn how to tile your bathroom. This one I just want to allow you to get a grasp of the whole project before you kind of dive into each, each step individually. And so as you can see, I'm using a metal band on the edge of the tile where it, where it ends. I'm using that metal band. I think it looks kind of cool. I, I, it has more of a modern look. Another method you could use is have a little, um, have a little bull nose piece of tile or like the rounded edge on the, the finished edge. Uh, those tiles tend to be pretty expensive. This is actually cheaper and I think it looks better. Here I'm actually using a little little tiny finishing nail to hold these things in place because they tend to sink down when you put them on, this mosaic. So even though that's compromising, compromising the water membrane a little bit, since that's the opposite side of the shower where very little water is going to be hitting that wall, I'm actually not too worried about it.
So as you can see, I'm doing six rows at a time on each wall, and that allows me to make sure the grout lines line up. Now if I did one entire wall, and then another entire wall, then what might happen is I might get to the top of the second wall, and by, by the top of them, the grout lines could be an eighth of an inch off or so. So this allows me to make sure that I make minor adjustments throughout the process. Again, with those, tile, with those little tiny um, tile wedges to make those adjustments. So I just go six rows up at a time. And it's also a good amount of uh, thin set to apply without it trying to dry on you before you can get to tiling it. Gives you plenty of time to cut your tile and work with it. So there I just built kind of a little ledger board um, to hold the tile that goes above the custom niche. As you can see, I have a sponge to clean up the excess um, thin set that I didn't use. That's very important. You don't want any globs of thin set drying on your tile. It's very difficult to clean up once it dries. And you also don't want any on the walls where you're about to lay tile because that's just going to leave a little bump that's going to be hard to tile over or you're going to have to scrape it off. So as you go, it's important to have a wet sponge with you to wipe off the extra thin set that gets all over. Now I'm sure some people who do tile all the time are a lot better at keeping it clean. But for me, this was a pretty messy process, so I had to spend a lot of time cleaning things up after I went, al went along in each step. And here, instead of applying the thin set to the wall, I'm actually back buttering the tile with the trowel and applying the thin set to the, t to the tile and then pushing that against the wall. One thing I found from this project, the window and the niche took a ton of time to do. Like just a big flat wall actually goes pretty quick. But when you have a niche and you have to cut a bunch of little pieces of tile and you have to, you know, I'm using this little trim piece that gives you a nice round corner and like it's, it's a, you know, kind of a metal look on the edges. I mean, lining that up and gluing it and cutting the pieces and I mean, there's just a tiny bunch of tiny little pieces to consider. It adds a significant amount of time to the project. So anytime you think about like, oh, that's easy, that's only going to add a few minutes, uh, that's the, the window and the niche probably doubled the amount of time it took me to install this tile.
And here I actually work from the top down. Uh, for me, it was just a little bit easier. So I didn't have to like perfectly measure all the way down and adjust for all that stuff. I could just work from the top down and cut pieces as I went down and use tape to hold it. And you'll notice I'm not using any tile spacers. That's because the tile spacers are actually built into the edge of the tile. And I only really want like a sixteenth of an inch um, joint for the grout. Otherwise the grout lines would be way too thick. So most subway tile, if you get the right stuff, they're gonna it's gonna have the little separators built into the tile itself, the little uh, tile spacers. And you can't really see it, but I'm leaving about a, an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch gap between the bathtub and the tile. And that's important because the bathtub needs to be able to move a little bit and you don't want to like shatter a tile when the tub expands or contracts and you want to have enough space so you can put a nice bead of caulking in there between the tub and the tile. So an eighth of an inch, um, at least I would say, three sixteenth inch at the max. If you go any bigger than that, then you're gonna have a huge gap and a really big caulk line. And here we go with the grouting. With the grouting, it's definitely important to not mix the entire bag at once, even though that's what it says on the instructions. There is no possible way that I could grout fast enough to grout this entire wall in one go before the grout dried. So I actually did it in sections. I just mixed a small amount, did a section, cleaned it up real good. And since I don't do this all the time, I'm kind of learning how to do it better. And since this is the first wall, I didn't do it very well. I actually learned a few things on this wall and then by the time I finished the third wall, I was much faster and my grout lines actually looked better. So don't mix all of your grout at one time. Now if you like this video so far, you'll actually love my other videos because I focus on creating high quality, easy to understand, and complete step-by-step -step videos that anybody can use to learn a new project. Now I use YouTube all the time to learn new DIY skills, but I find that I have to watch 10 videos to learn one topic and it's a pain in the ass filtering through all that bad advice. So when I create my videos, my aim is for you to watch that one single video and know exactly what to do have 100% confidence and know the best way to do that project. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And again, I will be posting more in-depth tutorials where I'll teach you exactly how to do everything you saw in this video. Everything from how to lay out the tile, how to install the tile, how to mix the grout, everything. And finally, if you love working with your hands, and you want to learn how to turn your home improvement skills into a profitable six-figure business that replaces your day job, visit me at handymanstartup.com. I have hundreds of free articles, podcasts, and even some premium training products that make starting and growing your business super easy. You'll actually be surprised. I have a lot of people who end up quitting their engineering jobs or their other day jobs where they're just not very satisfied and they love the handyman business that they've created. So check it out today at handymanstartup.com. I hope to see you over there.